All right, I think we're ready to get started on the monthly market report for June 2022. My name is David Childers, and for the next, gosh, 20 or 30 minutes, I'm going to walk you through some of the hottest topics in real estate right now. You know, every month we do the monthly market report so that you can be the most educated professional on all the topics that matter to the clients that you serve. So, you know, we're going to talk about where we're at in the year here in June, almost halfway through the year. And what we're seeing, starting to see a little bit of a shift in the market. We're going to talk about interest rates. We're going to talk about you know, where the market sits right now and then ultimately what's ahead today. So I'm going to jump right in, make the best use of our time. And we'll start here with this uh, you know, sort of statement. It's all been about mortgage rates. You know, If we think about the first six months of this year, they've certainly, uh, the market has been defined by rising mortgage rates. There's an old saying, when rates rise, they take the elevator. And when they come down, uh, they take the steps. And no doubt, we've seen this quick and dramatic rise in mortgage rates. So let's take a look at what's happening in uh, mortgages right now. We, we use this, we like to use the weekly monitor from Freddie Mac, the average 30-year fixed 5.09% uh, in this country. Sam Cater, the chief economist, said this, mortgage rates continue to inch downward this week, but are still significantly higher than last year, affecting affordability and purchase demand. Heading into the summer, the potential home buyer pool is shrunk and supply is on the rise and the housing market is normalizing. This is welcome news following unprecedented market tightness over the last couple of years. So, you know, seeing this flat, uh, you know, uh, movement in mortgage rates, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. I also clipped in here on May 19th where he said economic uncertainty is causing mortgage rate volatility. And I think that's been the story, uh, you know, up until now is that a lot of economic uncertainty, a lot of things, inflation, instability in the world, what the Fed's doing, all these things are happening causing mortgage rate volatility. One thing I do want to note on here, though, and I think you're seeing this happen in, in uh, the market across the country, is uh, adjustable rate mortgages, still good pricing right there on a 5-1 arm, a good product for those that uh, are looking and it fits for them. You know, back in the housing crisis, adjustable rates got a bad name, not a bad product, maybe a misused product at times, but uh, still good pricing out there on adjustable rate mortgage if that's right uh, for someone that you're working with or uh, somebody that uh, is looking to buy right now. But let's look at the the you know the rate environment going all the way back to the beginning of the year. This is this uh, look going back to December 30th on uh, of 2021. You know we wrapped up the year 3.1 percent in the average 30 year fixed, and we've sort of seen this quick and dramatic rise in interest rates over the first several months where. You know, we started to, to clearly plateau sometime around the third week in April. And in the last several weeks since then, we've kind of moved horizontally versus up. Well, that's a good thing, right? We don't want to see mortgage rates go higher, um, you know, as it eats into affordability, eats into, uh, you know, the purchasing power that consumers have when they come to buy a home. Um, but but we can clearly see this, see this plateauing trend. What we can't say is have rates peaked. We can't say if rates are or leaving. Nobody's got a crystal ball. I'm going to talk in just a minute about what's ahead, but you can clearly see that there's a plateauing in rates where we've moved uh, horizontally over the last several weeks. You know, if I were to bring perspective into this, and this is the graphic that I would recommend you use as you talk about uh, where we're at in the rate environment, it's this one right here, and no doubt you've probably seen it. Average 30 year fix 5.09% higher than where we've been for the last decade, but below where we've been in previous decades before this, going all the way back to the 70s. And I think this is important because sometimes in our business, we may say, hey, well, the interest rate is 5% right now, but be thankful because back in the 70s, they used to be 1,000% and you, know, you should like what you have. Well, you know, we need to acknowledge there are a lot of people that have gotten in the business, have just become homeowners, that this interest rate environment is higher than they've ever seen before. We need to listen to that. We need to understand that, but also to bring them perspective. Certainly 5% on a 30-year fix for anybody that's been around in this business for some time is still a very, very good rate. It's all about perspective, but certainly seeing the shock of that in the first few months of this year, first half of this year, like I said before, first half of this year will be defined in the real estate business by rising interest rates. You know, one of the things that I, I see right now, and I just wanna bring this up, is many people in our business struggling with perfect advice versus expert advice. And, and you know, I've got an agent here that has sort of a, maybe an iPad in their hands, um, maybe it could be a loan officer, whatever it is, somebody in our business, let's say there, 
And, and many people are saying, what if I don't deliver perfect advice right now? Well, I, I want to say something to that, and I've said it before, there's a difference between perfect and expert advice. Nobody's able to give you perfect advice in any scenario. You know, oftentimes I think about the doctor that you would go see when you have an illness, and you come to the doctor and they say, okay, here's what we see, here are the, the symptoms that you're having, and here's what we're going to prescribe is the treatment for that. They're going to prescribe the treatment that may be, you know, whatever it is, medicine, surgery, all the things that we know, rehab, and then you're going to come back 30 days later, and they're going to then say, here's what we see, and here's the treatment we're going to recommend. That is expert advice. It's not perfect advice, and that's why we go to the doctor. That's why we go to an attorney. That's why we go to professionals for their expert advice. We can absolutely give people expert advice in today's market. You know, one of the things I'd be saying to people that I was talking to is I subscribe to a service that gives me an up-to-date look at what's happening in the real estate market. And so, you want to talk about interest rates? Boom, we just talked about that. You want to talk about what's ahead? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. You'll have all that information. So, be focused on expert advice. When experts change or when things change, we're going to bring that to you, right? That's the expert perspective we have. The next thing I'll say on interest rates, you know, the expert advice on this, for the last 50 years, the 30-year fixed mortgage has followed the 10-year treasury. So the expert response to that is I'm following the 10-year treasury and I'm watching that. And you know, what have we seen this year? We've seen the 10-year treasury rise, and I'll show you this. This is a look at the 10-year treasury yield as compared to the 30-year fixed mortgage. And we've seen the, the 10-year treasury uh, yield rise since January and starting to, starting to flatten out like we see uh, in interest rates. But we're gonna continue to watch that for you, because if you go back in time, when we go back to this slide, the average spread has been 1.7. So think about that. Think about where the 10-year treasury is at, at 1.7 to it, and that's the 30-year fixed. Well, where are we at right now? Well, as of the first of this month, 2.2 the average spread or the spread between the 10-year treasury yield and the 30-year fixed. We're gonna continue to watch that as we go about. And I've got some information as well about what's ahead for mortgage rates from the Mortgage Bankers Association, but you can absolutely deliver an expert uh, perspective in this market, okay? So no doubt the first half of this year will be defined by uh, rising interest rates. The other thing that I would say, as interest rates have risen, as we've seen uh, you know, things happening in the real estate market, this question starts to come up, are we in a housing market correction? There was an article that came out uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, I think Mark Zandi wrote it, and uh, said, said we're in a full-blown correction. I'm gonna answer that question for you, but whether it is rising interest rates or existing home sales are down, are we in a market correction, or has the real estate market peaked? You know, All of these headlines that people start to read that then become concerned with those, you know, we always say headlines do more to terrify in a lot of these scenarios than they do to clarify what's actually happening uh, in the real estate market. So are we in a housing market correction? Quick answer to that, no, we are not. Okay, why is that? Well, the technical definition of a correction of any sort is a decline of 10% or greater in the price of a security asset or financial market. So if you wanna change the definition of a correction, then you can, and you could maybe say that, but if you go with the definition of a correction, we're not in a housing market correction, and you can say that confidently. Why is that? Experts are forecasting almost 9% appreciation in residential real estate this year. You know, if you think about that historically, we've seen about 3.8% appreciation in homes in this country shot way up on that in 2020 and 2021, these sort of anomaly years in real estate. And we're still looking at very healthy appreciation this year. So not a correction there. Here's the word I would be using or the phrase I would be using as I talk about the market right now. And it comes from Danielle Hale from Realtor.com. The housing market is at a turning point. We're at a turning point. We're starting to see signs of a new direction, but the ball is still in seller's courts in most housing markets. Now I'm gonna get into some information in just a minute that shows where we're heading and, and, and where clear signs are, but let's remember this. We're at a turning point right now, coming out of two anomaly years uh, in the real estate business, no doubt about that but the ball is still in seller's courts. We're still in a seller's market. They're still in just about every market and in, in those that I talk to, 
more buyers than there are available homes for sale. So what does this look like? I pulled a couple of slides that we like to use um, here on the monthly market report. First from showing time, and I think they're, they're very interesting. This is a look at showing time going all the way back to the beginning of 2019. That's the gray area, 2019 and into the first couple of months of 2020. I'm gonna call that pre-pandemic, okay? And in the blue section is everything since the pandemic hit up until the most recent information, April here, uh, of showing uh, activity. Now, I know we're here in June, you're gonna say, well, April doesn't matter and it's gonna come down from there. And I would agree, I would agree, but that's the most recent information we have. Here would be my case and my point in this graphic and why I believe it makes sense to use it right now is we're clearly heading back somewhere that's going to be pre-pandemic level demand. Okay, so not, not going back to pre-pandemic prices, nobody's saying that, but if you look at demand pre-pandemic, certainly we're gonna come off of the highs of 2020 and 2021 back to pre-pandemic level demand, which, oh, by the way, 2017, 2018, 2019, great, great years in residential real estate in this country. But that just gives a visual image to demand and where we've been, again, two anomaly years of real estate in 2020 and 2021, where interest rates dropped, the meaning of home changed across this country, and we saw demand and we saw price increases because of a lack of supply that we've never seen before in real estate. So where are we heading in demand? Back to pre-pandemic levels. Let's also go with the next headline that accompanies this, are we in a market correction? And is existing home sales are down. So let's look at existing home sales. This is look as of April, the seasonally adjusted rate, 5.6 million homes. Well, again here, let's look at 2017, 2018, uh, 2019 pre-pandemic years. And then 2020 and 2021 that I'm gonna go ahead and say again, are anomaly years, where we had heading with existing home sales, back somewhere in the neighborhood of where we were uh, pre-pandemic. But pre-pandemic sales were five and a half, 5.3 million, most recently here in April, seasonally adjusted 5.6 million units in existing home sales. That's not total home sales, just existing home sales. So if we look at that from a demand perspective, from an existing home perspective, Really, what we're looking at is a situation in heading back to where we were prior to the pandemic. And, and certainly the pandemic spurred the real estate market. And we could go into all the reasons. I think everybody that's watched the, the monthly market report for all the, you know, the time during the pandemic knows that you know, we've covered extensively the, the way that home changed. We've eaten at home. We've schooled our kids at home. We worked at home. And we know some of those changes are sticking around after the pandemic. We certainly know the drop in interest rates fueled uh, people that you know wanted to buy and said now is the time for a lot of different reasons. And so, as interest rates have risen, starting to to uh, you know moderate the market, bringing us back to pre-pandemic levels. Okay, but if 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 you were to start to look at where have we been uh, in this in this market and where we are, most recent information, average days on market as of April. 17 days in this country still a very very hot i would call white hot market so we're coming out of this white hot market into maybe just a hot market right now 17 days on market the average number of offers uh of five and a half offers on a home so as you look at all the information as you look at everything out there the headlines that are um you, you know out there hitting consumers those who are thinking about buying those who are thinking about selling and getting afraid this is the perspective I would bring to them. Okay, we're heading back to pre-pandemic levels of volume in our business, which were great years in real estate. Okay, let's talk about this, this, this third topic, what's ahead. You know, I always say nobody's got a crystal ball in this uh, business and, and we certainly do not, but we're gonna do our, our best to look ahead and say, what are experts saying about what's around the corner? It's hard to believe we're in June right now, halfway through, uh, the year here in 2022, looking to the second half, certainly the first half, we've seen a shift uh, in residential real estate coming out of uh, the last couple of years and a lot of people asking what is ahead. You know, if you're a team leader, if you're somebody that's bringing content to a 
a sales meeting, I would be talking about this. I would be talking about, okay, here's what experts are saying is ahead in the real estate market. First quote here, from Mike Frattantoni, chief economist at the Mortgage Bankers Association. He says, mortgage rates are likely to plateau near current levels. I'm gonna pause there. So what Mike Frattantoni is saying is mortgage rates are likely to plateau. We can already see the plateau. Can't tell you if it's a peak, but I can definitely tell you it's, it's plateauing. His perspective is they're likely to plateau where they are in the low fives right here. The financial markets have attempted to price in the impact of the Fed's action over this cycle and are likely to uh, likely also pricing in the economic slowdown that will result. Once we are past this rate spike and associated volatility, the Mortgage Bankers Association expects that potential home buyers may be more willing to re-enter the market. So home buyers maybe you know, in a rising rate environment go, whoa, we wanna know, we've talked about it, has the ability to take people off the fence. Some go one way and say, we're not gonna do it. And some go, we're gonna get in before it goes any higher. But as, as rates plateau, this volatility subsides, they're saying they expect more potential home buyers to be willing to enter the market. Okay, so interesting perspective there on rates. If we look at total home sales, you know, just a minute ago, we looked at existing home sales. This is a look at total home sales forecasted this year from Fannie, Freddie, MBA, NAR, everybody we look at. Anywhere from 6.9 million uh, homes sold this year to 6.1 million. To put that in perspective, in 2021, we sold 6.9 million homes in this country. Okay, most would say in the interest rate environment we're in, we're likely to see, you know, that impact the market to the tune of about 6%, I mean, uh, excuse me, about 10%. So as interest rates rise, we're likely to see that impact the market to about 10%, 10% less in home sales. Well, if you take that 6.9, it's about 700,000 homes less we would sell this year, okay? So these, these, these uh, you know, forecasts, 6.1 to 6.9, I think all have to do with, you know, what happens with interest rates, what happens with consumer demand, what happens with the economic, you know, uncertainty that's in this country, but that gives you perspective on total home sales this year, forecasted to be a very, very good year uh, for residential real estate. Next point about what's ahead. Experts don't believe the market is in a bubble or a crash is in the cards, like during the Great Recession. The nation is still suffering from a housing shortage that has reached crisis proportions at a time when many millennials are reaching the age when they start to consider home ownership. That's likely to keep prices high. You know, we've talked extensively about, you know, we're, we're not in a bubble, a crash is not coming, but what's important here that I would uh, pay attention to in this quote is that millennials are reaching the age when they start to consider home ownership. So millennials are working through the peak home buying years. We know they are the second largest generation behind the baby boomers, just behind them just a little bit. But, but as they move through, they're driving demand. We know we don't have the number of homes on the market for the number of people that uh, want to buy them. That's not going away tomorrow. And that lack of supply keeps upward pressure on prices across the country. So those that are wondering, are we in a crush, uh, 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 you know, a correction? Are homes gonna lose value? We can bring the expert perspective. We also can bring the real world perspective of what's happening with millennials and the demand they're bringing to real estate. You know, I think when when we think about you know our, our uh, you know how's the real estate market, one thing that's at a fever pitch right now is the call for you know are we heading into a recession in this country with the Fed's action of raising the Fed funds rate, which oh by the way is not the thirty year fixed mortgage rate. Um, you know that's intended to slow the economy. If that's not done precisely, that puts us you know potentially into a recession, and you, you know we'll we'll kind of watch that going forward. But you know, if we think about this topic, I think it's one we need to engage on, we need to talk about um, as we, we meet with people and, and, and certainly talk about their concerns. So just a couple of, of things on recession. Recession is defined by the National Bureau of Economic Research. And the technical definition is a significant decline in economic activity spreading across the economy lasting more than a few months. And they go on to say that. And there's also kind of a, a, an industry definition that we have of two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, but, but it's defined by the National Bureau of Economic Research. And that's their, um, their definition of a, of a recession as you get into the technical elements of it, not suggesting that we need to be 
uh, you know, become experts on the technical elements of defining a recession. But I think every time somebody who's a homeowner hears recession, they hear housing crash or they hear housing crisis because of what happened back in 2008. We've talked about this extensively. If you've watched the monthly market report and you followed it, you're well aware of that. Here would be my coaching. Don't let the curse of knowledge, you know, sort of affect you in this. Just because you know it, maybe just because you've talked about it, don't think that everybody understands this or everybody knows it. You know, we've used this graphic uh, during recessionary times. It's a study where we went back to the early 80s to prove that recession doesn't equal a housing crisis. You know, if you go all the way back to the early 80s, there have been six recessions in this country. And what happened here, it's, you can see it just in the graphic, four out of the six times, home prices actually appreciated. Two times they depreciated. Early 90s, uh, you know, less than 2%, I call it marginal depreciation. But what everybody remembers is in 2008, when homes lost almost 20% value. A lot of people were hurt then, a lot of family members, a lot of people that maybe we know and, and all know maybe ourselves had to make decisions on housing or, or do th something, a short sale, deed in lieu, foreclosure, whatever it was, a lot of people affected uh, back then. And, and when they hear recession, when consumers hear recession, they think that. You know, many people think every time we hit a recession that homes lose value, simply not true. And we can use this graphic to prove that as we're getting this information out of the market. Maybe people we work with, maybe people in our office believe that, and we wanna get this information out of the market. You know, I think if we use this information about what's ahead, we can guide clients in the best way possible. And I'll wrap uh, with this quote um, from Shivani Pearson, mortgage expert. If you're looking to buy a home, I would still recommend you do so even at higher interest rates because we have no reason to believe that home prices will stop appreciating. Home values going up is only a problem if you're trying to buy when you own, it's a gift. That's great perspective. You know, when you when you own a home and prices are rising, that means equity. We've talked extensively about equity, about the, the difference between a renter and a home buyer, uh, a homeowner, and, and the difference in their net worth. A lot of that, the majority of that, is through home ownership. You know, if you're wondering about how to get the message that you know we're talking about here on the monthly market report out in the market, I want to tell you this: the summer buyer and seller guides are available. You know, these are uh, uh, built for you, come out each quarter with updated information for everything that somebody that's thinking about buying, thinking about selling needs to know. If you're not using this with the clients that you serve, I would highly, highly recommend you use them. They're great to you know leave behind in an open house or maybe in your office or somewhere where people are you know congregating that, that may want this information or wondering what's happening in real estate go grab those summer buyer and seller guides, download those uh, in your account if you haven't done so already. The other thing I'll mention here, June is National Home Ownership Month. You know, new reason to own images are in the member area. All the things that we think about that are the non-financial benefits of home ownership from, you know, the comforts of home to your ability to express yourself personally to the stability and security that home brings. All of that is very, very important, and we want to be vocal about National Home Ownership Month and the reasons uh, to own a home that are beyond the financial reasons, all the personal reasons that we know every day. And I would say the driver for many, many of us to get into this business, to see people own a home and achieve the American dream. So grateful for the time that you invest in the monthly market report. Thank you for that. On behalf of our team, we are grateful for it. We'll be back next month with the information you need to be the trusted advisor to the clients you serve.